Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take the divergence of a vector field in cylindrical coordinates. So here we have the vector field expressed in terms of i, j, and k. So in Cartesian coordinates, it's rather easy to take the, the divergence of that vector field. We simply take the partial derivative with respect to x with respect to y and with respect to z of the x, y, and z components of the vector field, and the result is 2xz minus 1. So when we do it in cylindrical coordinates, we should get the very same result. But first what we need to do is we need to convert from Cartesian coordinates into cylindrical coordinates. So you can see that first we need to take y and z and convert them into cylindrical coordinates. For, course, for z that's easy, but for y it's rho times the sine of phi. Then we have to take i and convert i into cylindrical coordinates. Then we have minus y times j, and of course this is j in cylindrical coordinates, plus x times z squared in the z direction. Of course, k and z direction are the same direction. Then when we combine all the terms belonging to the rho unit vector and all the terms belonging to the phi unit vector and the c unit vector, this is what the new expression looks like for that vector field. And now we're going to take the gradient of that, and this is the formula that we saw in a few videos ago of how to take the gradient in cylindrical coordinates. So the first thing we need to do is multiply the rho component, the rho portion, of the vector field, multiply times rho, and then take the partial derivative with respect to rho, and then multiply times 1 over rho. We have to take the phi component, take the partial derivative with respect to phi, and multiply times 1 over rho, and then we take the z component, and we take the partial derivative with respect to z. So starting first of all, we need to multiply this times rho, and then take the partial derivative. So this is going to be equal to 1 over rho times the partial derivative with respect to rho of, if we factor out a rho and then we multiply this times rho, we get rho squared times z times the sine of phi cosine of phi minus the sine squared of phi. And so that's the rho component. And since we take the partial derivative of that, we can leave off the rho unit vector. And then here we have, let's close the bracket, plus 1 over rho times the partial derivative with respect to phi of this quantity right here. Now we can factor out a negative rho, so that would be a negative rho, times, so that leaves us with a z times the sine square of phi, plus the sine of phi times the cosine of phi, like that, close brackets, and then finally we're going to take plus the partial derivative with respect to z of the rho z squared times the cosine of phi. And put brackets around that. So now taking the partial derivative of this, let's see what we can do here. So here it's with respect to rho, so this becomes equal to 1 over rho times 2 rho times the quantity z sine of phi cosine of phi minus the sine square of phi. Oop, and that takes, we need a closing bracket here and a closing bracket there. All right, so that's the first part. Now we take the partial derivative of this with respect to phi. And since we take it with respect to phi, this becomes a constant goes outside, so this becomes rho divided by rho, which is 1, with the negative, or negative 1, times, here we get z times, well, here we take the derivative with respect to phi, we get times 2 sine of phi to the first power, times the derivative sine, which is the cosine of phi, and then plus, here we have a product, so we take the first, times the derivative of the cosine, which is negative sine, so that would be negative sine of phi, plus the second, which is the cosine of phi, times the derivative of first, which is the cosine of phi, so make that the cosine squared of phi, and then here we can make this a sine squared of phi if we make this into a negative sine, okay? So that's the second one. And here we take the derivative with respect to z, so this becomes plus 
2 rho z times the cosine of phi. Right. Now we need to simplify that. So what do we have here? Well, first of all, this row cancels out that row. So here we have a 2 z sine phi cosine phi. And so let's take this 2 and put it in front here. And let's take this 2 and put it in front there. Because notice now we have a 2z sine phi cosine phi minus 2z sine phi cosine phi. So this will cancel out this. And then we have a minus 2 sine square of phi. And this minus multiplied times this minus makes that a plus. So that means that one of these cancels out with one of those. So this cancels out and this becomes a minus 1. Now we have a minus sine square of phi and a minus cosine square of phi. This added together becomes negative 1. And then we have this at the end. So in the end, we end up with 2 rho z cosine of phi minus 1, because that's the negative sine square of phi and minus cosine square of phi. This negative makes that a negative, and so that becomes a negative 1. So, do we have the same thing that we had over here? Well, almost. First of all, we have the minus 1, that matches. We have the z here, but what about the 2 rho cosine of phi? Well, the 2 is there, and rho times the cosine of phi is equal to x. So this can then be translated to 2xz minus 1, which is exactly the same that we got when we used Cartesian coordinates to find the divergence. So now, obviously, in a case like this, you never want to convert to cylindrical coordinates and go through all this work to get this result, because it's much easier in Cartesian coordinates. But it's sure nice to see an example how it can be done and what order of operation we have to use when we have 1 over rho times the partial derivative of this of the quantity rho times f sub rho, the rho component of f. So you can see this is just simply for example purpose. Not that I would recommend that you do it this way, but at least when you have to do it this way, now you know how to do it. That's how it's done.